Have you guys seen Kylo Ren's lightsaber? Yeah, man, that thing's weird looking. No, it's not. It's awesome. Here, let me go see if I can find it. I'll show it to you. My backpacks got jets. Well, I'm Boba, the fat. Star Wars. <laughs> Nothing but Star Wars. Stop it, please. It's Discard 2 Reroll. We're a podcast about a little Dyson card game we like to call Star Wars Destiny. I'm your host, Mr. Chip, and... I'll tell you today, I, I was struggling to find a topic, you know, I said, what would really, what would interest, uh, all of our re-rollers, all of our, the people who listen to this podcast, because you, you know, you're, you could be a fickle group, you know, you, you demand good quality content. And I was thinking, and, uh, with our, our guest who's on today, who's home alone right now, waiting for something like this, the news to drop about a new set. How about a new set to talk about? It's Mike, the rebel spy. Mike, how are you? Hey, I'm awesome. How are you? I'm uh, I'm fantastic. Like I'm really, I tried to not look at all these t- so that we could talk about it, but I, I was struggling with, you know, what could we do? And the one thing I thought about was if we, you know, in anticipation of a new set announcement may be happening. And I, I definitely thought it was going to be after um, Legion came out because that's where all the attention has been for, for a uh, fantasy flight. Mm-hmm. Um, that if we could come up with that rubric, like that's, that's how to evaluate the cards, because then we'll be ready for when the new set drops, right? We can just plug it in and say, these are the top cards, or whatever. And then all of a sudden you said, well, it looks like we got something to talk about. And then here, <laughs> and here it is way of the force. What do you think? Way of the force. Oh, uh, I'm like more than excited. This yeah, set looks awesome. This is, this is unbelievable. And you know, so I, it's like, I just miss every time they do this. So I, like today, purposefully, I checked uh, at their website and I guess they, they just released something about what price support or something like the quarter kits or something like that. Like yesterday. Yeah. I, I, I saw that like yesterday. I, I don't know if, yeah, I, I think that they, they had it on their, on their website yesterday. So there's some cool things there. There was a new holdout blaster that they announced. Mm-hmm. Right. And there was like a full art holdout blaster and uh, some new, what was the other one? I, I have, it's yeah, all the, the other one was uh, the forces with me, I think. Yep. Yep. So that was there. And then the, the little tokens or whatever. So, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that sounded exciting. And then I, I keep hitting refresh, nothing. And then this, this happens. This is insane. The amount of stuff that they <laughs> released. Yeah. It's a man. It's, it's incredible and it's exciting. And like a, a, everything about the set, may, like just gets me going. I'm, I'm super stoked. Well, I definitely love the decision to go with a white, like color packs and buy it's just it's it's just so much more appealing to me to see it so i think on the shelf it's going to look amazing there's snoke sitting there who's yes. on the side of the box right who's mm-hmm. spoilers cut in half but you know, <laughs> i'll edit that later uh, uh so way of the force now uh, i'm so glad it's you that's uh that's on the show today because there are definitely some things even though i didn't try to not look at all of them uh some people i had no idea who they were so i'm hoping you can help me Oh, I can definitely help you. You you know I can help you. <laughs> so from from their website, it says, uh, the, you know, the Force is a mystery to many in the Star Wars galaxy. You're not kidding. Uh, empires have risen and fallen. The Force remains content. All right. Or, or uh, remains constant, whether it's the allure of the dark side or the path of the light, yada, yada, yada. But here's where it gets interesting. So Way of the Force is the name of the set. It's 160 brand new cards. Way of the Force revisits many of the saga's most iconic characters in fresh new ways. Uh, focusing on their unique equipment, abilities, and tactics. Okay, nothing too big there. Uh, so here's where it starts. The set includes the most expensive support yet to enter the game. So well, we think about support. What support? What's the most expensive support now? Uh, it's a tie between um, the ATST and the uh, Sonic Cannon. So those six or five? They're six, I believe. Six. Okay. So it could be. Let me check. Five. That. Right, we're gonna. Yeah, let's we're, let's confirm that. We're gonna go here. <laughs> And we're gonna go. Let's see. I, I, like my 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 guts a six, but I could totally be wrong. I've never played either of let's them. Let's see. Uh, five. Okay, they're five. They're five. Well, what? yeah. Let's let's make sure that the ATST is also right, five. See. Can we sort by? Let's say what if we search for all of them? <laughs> how do I get? How do I get all my cards? Uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, if you if you get cards up there and then awakenings. Yeah. And then go to the red. All right. Where am I going now? AT, okay, ATST is six. Okay, there it is. I was, so right, that, I was right on one of them. Yeah, you nailed it. That's a good <laughs> look at that, though. If that was cheaper, look at that. Anyway, so it's going to yeah. be more than six? That, I, I, I can't even imagine, like, what... Like, How? What, How would that even what, happen? What could be seven, but, like, not so much bigger than, <laughs> right. a, than an ATST? 
I can I can I mean an ATAT I guess but I, I don't know. That is insane. So I'm thinking about like and how would you even play it but yet the decks that I played like when Thrawn was back was making all kinds of money that mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure that guy could have played it whoever whooped me when he was playing Thrawn at my regionals. So. <laughs> um, so, okay, so that's the first thing. The set includes the most expensive support yet to enter the game. But they didn't spoil that one. They just spoiled it. No, they didn't. Yeah. Uh, a new way to bring back a defeated character. Where are they going with this? Yeah, I don't know. A new way to bring back a defeated character. So Okay, so like, what do we have so far that brings back a defeated character? Just endless ranks? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you can kill may, your character. Maybe so. another one, but I I can't remember. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. Is it a, is it a power action? Because they're doing some goofy stuff with power actions now. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, so that's going to be interesting. And then and then and I I figured they were going in this direction at some point. A rare battlefield, so a rare battlefield. So that's Whoa. first that co- comes complete with its own die. A battlefield that, with a die. That's 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 crazy. That's, that's definitely new. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this need. Yeah. They need this kind of stuff now. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's see. Furthermore, look for mechanics introduced in the newest base set legacies to be expanded upon, such as the plot cards that can completely change, that can completely change how you play the game. <laughs> how are they going to change how we play the game? Do you have to play it without looking at your cards like a uh, Hanabi Com- or like what are you going to completely? Gonna... They're, they're, yeah. they're going to change it completely, completely change it. <laughs> I don't. I mean, what could you completely change about the game? Like, you don't get resources, or you get five, re- two, three resources, or I mean, there's already cards that do that. Completely change. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> so that that that's that's just in the text. That's not even in the cards that they spoiled. So then they do this big group shot, which is always good, and they'll put a couple cards up there that you can't see. So like, you can't see the. They, they always do that. They they love doing that. Hiding cards behind other cards. Yes, man, that's kind of yeah. That, as, that's a, as 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 Chris and Jay would say, it's it's childish. That it is it's extremely childish. <laughs> what is this business? I see like a is that Nim Nub or whatever the guy's name is over here. <laughs> uh, it's definitely people. Like yes, uh, it's, it's people. Let's go back here. Let's see if I can. Or see. A- aliens. Uh, it, it looks like the card's called Opening Volley. Um, oh, Opening Volley. Or did, like Opening how, Something. That is a you're good. Could, could, could be, be a V, yeah. right? Yep, that's nasty looking. Yeah. All right, and then and then this is uh that that one I have no idea, <laughs> but but it's 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 got Ayla and then a bunch of stormtroopers or sorry clones behind her. Okay, is that uh is so Ayla right? Is there a lot of mm-hmm. other people like Ayla? Like is she a particular race that has the uh, things off her head? She's a Twi'lek, yeah, a and there's Twi'lek. like a bunch yes. of Twi'leks. Twi'lek. Uh, the, I loved the Twi'leks in uh, in the second Star Trek movie. That was really good. All right, and then you see Grievous here, which is insane. And of course, they talk about that in a minute. Luke, mm-hmm. uh, who's there, and, and and this person, which will I have no idea who that is, but you're going to tell me. Yeah, Bo Katan. So let's start with it. If you're all right with doing that, uh, because I wanted yeah, to see these cards. Let's do it. Let's do it. So here we go. We got a rare. This is a card number fifty-two from what is it? Way of the Force. That's what this says. Way right? of the Force. Yeah. W T F. WTF is right. There you, maybe that's the theme. It's like uh, in Magic, they got unglued or whatever it is, where they have all these crazy yeah. So this is Underhanded Tactics. Is the it's joke a, set. Yes, it, that could totally happen. Uh, it's an upgrade yeah. ability, uh, and it has two specials on there. So uh, a, one modified ranged, another mod- one modified ranged, uh, one uh, discard, and it's got two specials and a blank. So this is a villain yellow. Again, rare, and it's a special. Deal one indirect damage to an opponent. You may resolve another one of your dice hmm. for one, one cost. What say you? That's, that's definitely interesting. Um, I, the one cost is really nice. I don't know. I mean, it, it does have four damage sides, right? But one of them is you know just one indirect damage. The other ones are right. modifiers. So I, I, I don't know. The, the you may resolve another one of your dice part is like not super overwhelming can help right. you speed up your turn a little bit but nothing special uh because if it's a spe- I, yeah it's a special already so i mean you could special like you already would resolve specials at that point so it has yeah it's something else yeah and i actually it, it was really funny in the article and like there's always something like this in in the, the destiny articles it's you know as if the person who's writing it doesn't play destiny right um but they're, they're talking about this and the bo katan special which we'll see in in a minute but it says like you can chain this into the Bo-Katan special. 
But mm, yeah. I, I don't think that that person understands what special chaining is because special chaining isn't just resolving your dice showing special. Right. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't. <laughs> so you probably wouldn't do that. You'd want to do yeah. another one that's not a special. Exa- yeah. Exactly. And I, I actually just noticed the artwork where the person looks like they are missing their hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is a pretty bad. <laughs> it's bleeding all over themselves. Okay, so that's not Greedo. Uh, that's, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's green blood. It, that's not Greedo, right? Uh, no, I think it's a, just another another Rodian, which is another another uh, Star, Star Trek race. Right, that's great. The very, very good. <laughs> I speak that language, actually. All right, so this is... <laughs> So if we had a tool that would allow us to evaluate cards, uh, we'd look at its cost, which is one, right? So that's not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got it's two, two specials on the die, uh, four yeah. damage altogether, the sides, right? Four damage sides. But I, I, I don't know when the heck you would, like, why would I be, I don't know, when would I use this card ever? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's like a, maybe a decent kind of like stepping stone upgrade where you like, Let's say turn one, you want to play this, and then a one cost right, like right. removal card or something like that. Um, you know, like you could play something like this and deal a little bit of damage, and then next turn overwrite it or something. Right. Uh, it doesn't seem super powerful. I will say though that um, like now that we have a draft format, like right. cards like this become a lot more interesting, a lot more relevant. So like this in draft would totally be worth playing. Oh, so. for sure, cheap and quick and all that good stuff. So. Mm-hmm. interesting all right underhanded tactics Let's see what's next here uh all right this looks great i have no idea who this person is she's a <laughs> she's a death watch lieutenant how do i even say bo katan cra- crazy what is it i think it's chris a but i i don't exactly French. know this pronunciation French. yeah all right she's a character and a trooper uh, yes death watch lieutenant i like that uh so she yeah. has her diet it's crazy uh so it's three ranged two melee one shield, one resource, and a special, and a blank. Uh, you can include yellow villain upgrades in your deck. So that's Which good. Which is awesome. Right? It's kind of like the reverse of what Finn was, right? Mm-hmm. He was weapons, wasn't it? Wasn't it uh, yellow? No, he was... Yeah, yellow. yeah. So Finn, Finn was... Uh, red you weapons. can include red villain weapons right. and supports in your deck. Okay, so yellow villain upgrades in your deck. Uh, and her mm-hmm. special is deal two damage to a character or three damage instead if this character has one or more villain upgrades. That's awesome. All right, so who is this person? All right, so Bo Katan is a Mandalorian. Um, okay. It, it, so let me let me preface this by saying uh, this is a Clone Wars spoiler, like for sure. Okay. I mean, this card in general is a Clone Wars spoiler, so whatever. Okay. Um, so she is originally part of a group called death watch which um is ba- basically the entire goal of like the death watch organization is to like uh restore mandalore to a society of like war like warriors and like uh you know violent clans basically okay um, because during the clone wars mandalore is a pacifist uh like society and their their leader is uh her name is satine and she you know sort of promotes pacifism okay um and so Bo-Katan and the other Death Watch people, uh, you know, want, want to return Mandalore to, to their, you know, for, to their former glory, as they so think. Um, and in the Clone Wars, uh, Maul ends up uh, taking over Death Watch, basically, like using Death Watch to take over Mandalore. And um, when that happens, she kind of like sees that Death Watch is actually evil and that like... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, like like that. That's not what what she actually wants to be doing, and she uh, kind of breaks away from it, and so she uh, helps rescue Satine and you know do some other stuff. She is also Satine's sister, which you find out in Clone uh, Wars. Spoiler, um, yeah, spoiler. But yeah, it she's not one of my favorite characters. I I, I wouldn't you know say man, she's such a cool character. She's yes. she's not one of those characters for me. Um, but she's definitely worthy of a card and. Uh, yeah, just the more that they, you know, dig, dig into like those uh, kind of characters that are maybe maybe not as well known. I th- I think like the better, the more design space they'll yeah. they'll find. Well, the, well, they definitely gave her a card. That's for sure. I mean, she's got nasty damage sides here. Yeah, yeah, and and 12, 12 HP as well, which is yeah, which is worth worth considering. You so um, it makes sense that she's a hero, but why the villain connection then? So, so kind of bad, kind of good. Yes, yeah, exactly. So she like. 
I, I think the the villain connection is like kind of she, she she used to be a bad guy now she's a good guy yeah um so she she can still draw from that arsenal um and it kind of like uh, goes with her you know just kind of like warrior mentality she can just use any you know weapon yeah or like, at least the yellow <laughs> weapons um and so, then actually side note which uh could be important given what we, what we've already sort of uh seen hints of in this set uh she is also in uh comes back in rebels and um she ends up with the dark saber oh boy. so um if we expect to see the dark saber in this set which i do based on the uh play mat that they released for worlds um yes. it all it totally totally makes sense that bo-katan is in this set as well so you think the dark saber is going to be a card in this particular set is that what you're saying? i don't see how it how it's not with you know that art that we saw on the uh on the the, the play mat and right. um I mean, like, since she's in the set, she has the dark saber. I, I, I think it. I, I don't know. I, I, I would think so. Yeah, that, it seems like that's the, that's the the way they're headed with the big sabers, mm-hmm. and that's what everybody wants too. So I'm trying to find pairings now. So she's fifteen, fifteen twenty twenty. Let me see if I can bring that up on the database here. If we can figure out what those pairings would be. So you're talking twenty. Of the, man, that's getting that expensive range for sure right <laughs> yeah definitely uh so what off the top of your head what what, what can what are you gonna do with this card um well you can put put it with like ezra if you wanted to um you can go like one die Bo katan like elite poe or elite ray or something like that um like a, a lot of the pairings that could work for sabine would work for her you can go like Bo katan yoda um for instance and Chain, chain some specials uh there i mean there i think there, there's a lot of different different options you can go like bo katan with uh with like kanan like one die kanan you could go uh one die bo katan one die sabine which would be terrible but pretty funny you could do it um her her i mean her die is is super good like none of like she, she has two sides that are most of the time you, like you got to think most of the time they're going to be um, like threes and then, and then a two and none of them cost money. So she's going to be able to deal a lot of damage and it's going to be real sweet. So I'm looking at you. Can be, uh, Magna guard is nine. <laughs> there you go. You Magna guard is also a villain character. So you could not. Do oh, that. it's hero. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> Cause I see her. She looks evil. All right. So let's go back to, hold on. Let's go back to hero. <laughs> Let me filter my list here. Hero. All right. See if that comes up. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. All right, uh, so you go like Akbar. You, you could actually do uh, Lobot, which would be kind of interesting. Yeah, where is he? Um, is he in get here? some some Guardian action going. Yeah, what's the, so Rebel Commando? There you go. Elite Jar Jar. I mean that that's course, that's gotta be it, right? Of course, I think that's the match right there. Elite Jar Jar. <laughs> what I'm trying to think is there anything else elite? No, there really isn't. Is there? No, uh, Ezra Jar Jar, and then if they you know release additional like ten point elites then maybe yeah hmm interesting yeah this would be a, a probably a, a three die setup i wonder if that's the direction they're going to go because you know when you think about like competitive destiny you know those three die setups are, are pretty pretty hard to roll with yeah they're they're definitely rare um i think like removal is so good now that like you really need like the you know like as many dice on the board as you can so that when your dice inevitably do get removed, you can, you know, st- still do stuff. Right. So, right, right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. There's our character. Now we've got a couple more yellow here. We've got, well, the last yellow that they spoiled. This is an upgrade ability. It's formidable, right? Now, yeah, like this it. thing is sweet. Art looks very cool on this one too. Now this is the mm-hmm. uh, episode two. Am I right? Yep. Django yep. Fett. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Up on the uh, like uh, Camino landing pad yep. or whatever it is. Whatever yep. it is. Yep, yep. So here's formidable. Now, uh, one of the interesting things we we mentioned before we went on is that there's a ton of uh, a ton of legendaries here. Yeah, there's. Crazy. I think they spoiled four legendaries and already, like, which is yeah, that that's almost a quarter of them. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to zoom in. Do you notice uh, Do you notice that logo for the set? Yeah, it looks like Yoda's uh, Yoda's head for sure. Yoda's head. <laughs> How about that? Interesting. Okay. Way, um, way up the force. Yeah. I wonder, did they do it? So it was what an X wing for, uh, for the last yeah, for legacies. Hmm. And okay. then, uh, I think a tie fighter for empire war. Yeah. Okay. So this is formidable. It's a, so it's a 
two cost and it's a uh, let's see what does it have here two melee one shield two shield and then two specials and a blank and it's a uh, it's special is deal one damage to an opponent's character if that damage was not blocked you may move an equipment or weapon from that character to another one of that opponent's characters crazy yeah this card is really really cool um look at the dice the die looks amazing too oh it look looks that. it looks good fantastic. lord they are yeah. they stepped it up on this one for sure mm-hmm. like all all of the art that that you know that they they showed on these on these cards is just on another level um so good but yeah it's a really really cool ability um i played uh at Gen Con, I played a Palpatine deck, and the battlefield that I was using was Cargo Hold. Okay. And so, like, with Cargo Hold, you get to move a, an upgrade from one character to another. Um, and so I got to see firsthand sort of how powerful that effect is. Um, so let's say, for instance, your opponent has activated, you know, one of their characters, and they have an upgrade in the pool, and, like, they can't resolve it right away for some reason. Like, let, let, let's say... Like it's a mall saber right. and it's on like a plus three or something like that. Okay. They don't have any other uh, melee sides to to you know uh, link it with, um, and you have this showing a special. So, like worst case scenario or th- their best case scenario is they have to like re-roll their one character without re- rolling in their other character that might be able to hit that uh, that melee damage because if they do roll out their other character, um, like you can just hit their character with Maul Saber for one and move the Maul Saber, removing the die from the pool. Okay. Um, and so it, it puts your opponent in a really weird spot where they have to like make suboptimal decisions to play around you basically removing their, their die. Um, and then in addition to that, like you can move upgrades, you know, around between characters. Like if you have one of their characters about to, you know, die uh you move like an upgrade over to that character and then defeat that character to remove that upgrade so it's just super versatile super awesome i love it yeah i think about like moving an ancient lightsaber off somebody Mm -hmm. right they're playing using the heal they can't heal that character anymore like oh so good yep man this could be really powerful for sure interesting yeah one 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 thing to note is that it does only work on equipment and weapons um but there's a lot of weapons a lot of equipments in the metagame right now so um yeah, I I wouldn't be wor- too worried about that uh, right now. Anyway, interesting. That might yeah. change. <clears throat> I see this in the uh, the little deck that I played for regionals. This would be in the uh, the boba. Uh, what you call it? Yeah, the the boba, boba sister. seventh deck. Yeah, it, it definitely could be. Yeah, interesting. It's I a like really it. strong uh, special for sure. I like it. All right, now look at this one. We're getting into blue cards. This is a plot. Oh. So they're spoiling plots now, but. Notice the number. So good. It's four. So this one's four. Yep. So it's now, expensive. So I got to think about what are those pairings that get you to what twenty six points total, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're enc- maybe that's how they encourage some of the 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 different uh, the different die combinations. Then so you're not always playing yeah, elite yeah. elite, right? So here's mm-hmm. uh, here's the plot. It's called Built to Last. Uh, cool. Just the I like the way the art's framed, not the the particular angle of the picture of this one. <laughs> but anyway, either way. It does look cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, it does look yes, it looks cool. Each and the like blue kind of uh vibe to show that it's a blue card looks really good. Yeah. The blue sorry you cut out what is it? The blue what? Oh yeah like the the, the whole blue like um area at the bottom just to like show oh, yeah, the blue yeah. card. Very look, cool. looks really good. I thought you were talking about the blue stuff in there. What's that stuff? Oh <laughs> what is that? Yeah I, I don't know what that stuff is. Okay. I figured that was something from Clone Wars. Uh, each of your unique upgrades has the redeploy keyword. After you play a unique upgrade, you may exhaust this plot to gain one resource. Mm. Each of your unique yeah. upgrades has is redeploy right off the bat. Yeah, so all, all of your unique upgrades are redeploy and mm. and that is nuts. Yeah, so the, give me an example. What are some unique upgrades? So Maul's lightsaber. S- saber it off the top. <laughs> Rede- yeah, immediately that's got redeploy. That's yep. insane. It's it's got redeploy and it costs two. After you play unique upgrade, you may exhaust this plot to gain one resource. Right. After you play So you you have to have three resources, but you gain one of them back. So Right, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Man. And I mean it it works with when overriding as well. So let's say you have like a unique two cost and you override it with a unique two cost, a different unique two cost, you you still gain one resource. 
That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. So now I'm thinking about like what would be 26 point combos that could use that. Yeah. So, so like on the villain side, if you wanted to play, uh, uh, like Maul's lightsaber, um, you could potentially go for like uh, Seventh Sister and uh, Mother Talzin, and uh, that's twenty six points right there. It's not a lot of health, but being able to play, you know, yeah. two cost Maul sabers and then guarantee them hitting plus fours with Mother Talzin seems pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty sick, actually. <laughs> and then you know, having, having re- redeploy on top of that is is real nice. Um, on the hero side, you got stuff like maybe. Uh, some like like new Luke with Ayla, um, right. is twenty six points would would be pretty nice. Uh, you could go like um, I was thinking maybe like Obi Maz, but with like a single die Obi Wan and Elite Maz, or like Maz with new Ray or something like that could work. Now, did, so. you, did you notice something down here? I'm trying to think. I got to look at the the rest of the plots. Let me see if I can bring yeah. That. What, let's see. First of all, that's yellow, right? That yeah, so okay. it's an uncommon. What about this? Oh, uh, it says blue. Now, were plots colored before? No. Well, all the plots bef- plots before were neutral gray. I think that they were gray. I don't know if it specifically said gray, but they were all just generic. Let me br- um, let me bring up a plot because yeah, why that. That's interesting. Well, so so the like this being blue would mean that you would have to have a blue character on your team to be able to play this plot. Okay, so that's huge right there. Yeah. Right? That's different. That's that's totally new. Yeah, absolutely. Now let me go back to what did they say? Uh rare battlefield uh plot cards that can completely change how you play the game. Well that doesn't complete well, I mean that that does it changes a little bit, but the fact that you have to you can only use it, right? With blue. Yeah. I just missed yeah. that totally. You, I, I, I think you, you can like have non-blue characters on your team as well, but I think you have to have at least one blue character okay. to be able to, to use it. Interesting. But I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that, so okay. don't quote me. <laughs> All right. I feel like that, so that definitely was not the case before because they were just gray. Yeah, before they were just gray. I think they were just trying to introduce the concept of it. Yes, I yeah, I, I think that, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Okay. And um, like the fact that there's even a spot for neutral – means that you know in the future we will probably see hero and villain specific plots which oh, is for sure very exciting <laughs> they really uh, yeah there's so much they can i mean it's that. Uh, that, that, that's such a no-brainer that, like they they have to do that yep absolutely well speaking of uh of equipment here comes another one well we went from built to last which is a close-up of somebody's uh, midsection to uh <laughs> luke skywalker's <laughs> lightning rod cards that's, <laughs> ca- cards that sound inappropriate but aren't yep uh, there, there you go this is a uh, so this is two cost and uh, it's upgrade equipment. It's a uh, a lot of melee on there or melee, if you will. One uh, melee, two melee, two melee, and then there's a one shield, one resource, and a blank. And this one uh, says upgrade equipment. While this upgrade is attached to Luke, you may resolve the uh, melee damage sides of this die as if they were shields. Mm. Super cool. So, what, give me an in- for instance on this guy. Uh Let's say, let's say you're about to take two damage, but you don't want to take two damage. Okay, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> you resolve a, a melee die, and then it becomes a shield. Yeah, okay. There's one way to do that for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly like I, it's it, it's a cool ability, but I don't see it being an ability that's used like super often, unless you're in those cases where it's like, okay, your character's got two health left, and they're gonna die unless you resolve this as two shields. Um, the versatility is just really nice. Um, so I, I think that I like that about it. Yeah. Uh, having, having the option is obviously better than not having the option. Yeah. Um, sure. and then as a die, like the sides are incredibly good. Um, yeah. it's, you know, it, everything is, is a base damage side. Nothing costs money. Um, this is just like a, a really, really solid. solid two two cost upgrade. Yeah. So. Very solid. Very solid. And if you uh, couple it, uh, couple it here, it's a unique upgrade. Yeah, so it only costs one, <laughs> and it and is redeploy, and as redeploy. I mean, like so, so that, now, that, yeah, now how's this sound, huh? Not now, it sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds like, pretty freaking good. And you said <laughs> like Luke, you, <laughs> uh, Ayla, right? Does that work as a pairing? Yeah, absolutely. It's twenty six points. Uh, twenty six points. So you, you, you get like uh, Luke from the from, from the Legacy Starter Set plus Ayla, and then you play like this. You play Obi Wan's lightsaber. You play uh, Ray's staff. You play. 
you know, like every phallic it, card they make, you just play that in his deck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's and, perfect. Uh, <laughs> also, I'm, I'm not sure if you if you noticed, this, uh, but the, the the card number there is is very. Uh, oh God, that's awful. Very <laughs> interesting. That is awful. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell people what card number it is, but I, I didn't like, I ordered these cards cause you said, well, put them by color. I'm like, okay, well, I'll put the picture of whoever's, you know, is that Luke? <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure. It's All right. Luke, so yeah. Luke's package is built to last <laughs> if everybody wants to know. And then it's uh Luke's <laughs> private is there. And then it's 69 is the card. What are they doing? It the fantasy yeah. flight's going crazy over there. Well, then, and like so, so many things had to line up for for that to work out, and I'm so happy that it did. And then look at this guy. Why he shouldn't be? He should be not grumpy. He should be happy. Look at that. <laughs> he 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 should be happy with with, with that beautiful lightning. Yeah, my God. So here's a he's a reluctant instructor. So we knew this was here, interesting. I thought this was coming first. You know, to couple with the movie, and uh, yeah. So it's a little bit later than I would have expected. They went with a younger guy. Uh, but now we've got, I mean, do we have all facets of Luke at this point? Uh, we have, we have, we definitely have a lot of them. We've got, uh, you know, farm boy, Luke, we've got return of the Jedi, Luke, we yes. got old man, Luke. I want the Luke um, in the, uh, we don't have the Luke in the X wing. No, we don't. Yeah. We go Luke in an X wing, Luke on Hoth. Yeah. Luke I think are Hoth. two that, that, that we, we could expect to see down the road. Luke inside. Um, of, what if, what if they do the creature set? Here we go. Here's the, what if they do the creature yes. set, they do the Tauntaun. And then mm-hmm. if you could take Luke, right? Hoth Luke, and you put him underneath the Tauntaun card, right? That's the, oh. that's metaphoric for opening up the Tauntaun with a lightsaber. <laughs> and then you get, you regain two health for, yeah, I don't know. Something. Okay, here, here it is. It's okay. the The Tauntauns like like a two cost upgrade. Okay, it it gives you some like focus. It gives you some resources. Yeah, and then it has a power action, and the power action says uh, discard the support from play to heal a character for like for one uh, or two if that character is Luke Skywalker. There something you go. like that. Exactly. Boom. Perfect. Per done. That's it. Boom. Hire Boom. hire me. You need to win worlds. <laughs> so you can design the card. Cause that's, yeah. uh, that needs to happen. That'd be awesome. So here's, <laughs> here's the uh, reluctant instructor. Uh, and, uh, and so here's what this one is. It's a, it looks like a pretty good diet. It's got one, uh, one focus, one shield, two shield, two shield, and one, uh, resource in a blank. So not a lot of damage there. And by not a lot, I mean, none, um, character Jedi, you may resolve the shield sides of this. Oh, see, it's the other way around the shield sides of this die is if they were melee power action, move a blue ability from this character to another blue character. 12, 15, 12, 12 and, health. Yeah, and 12, 12 health as well. I, I love this character. What, what do you think about him? So it's a legendary, so that's good. I'll be chasing mm-hmm. this guy. Um, I, you know, I'm just trying to think again, who, in what context would I use him? Move, move a blue ability from this character to another blue. So the example they gave on the website was four speed. Yeah, that's a terrible example. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> give, give me a better example of why, <laughs> what I would do with it. Uh, I mean... So, like, let's say you're playing Luke, and uh, like, what, one of the things that I really love about it pairs perfectly with with the you know Force Away or the uh, uh, Last Jedi version of Rey, um, which is just beautiful and thematic and amazing. Um, so you can play him with Rey, and then let's say you have a Force throw on Luke, and Luke is uh, you know their target because you put a Force throw on Luke. Before he's about to die, you can move the force throw over to Ray, and you still got your force throw. There you go. So it's just it gives any of your blue ability uh, abilities uh, redeploy, as well as allowing you to re- to roll them multiple times in a turn. So you could uh, play a blue ability on Luke, activate Luke, resolve that die, move that um, ability over to your other character, you and then roll it, it in again. Yeah, there's the answer. Is, which is great. There's the answer for sure. So yeah, the die itself, you know, what's that going to do? It shields you up. But again, you can mm-hmm. resolve the shield as if it were melee. So that means it has three damage right there. Three yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a one, two, two on a, on a character that costs 15. I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's solid. I, 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 I don't think that we've seen a more consistent character at this point cost. The interesting thing, it just throws you when you see the shields right there on that die. But yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's melee damage. I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. And then the yeah, focus. Yeah, Like... It just it's so good it's so good man all right they definitely want to get this card played that's for sure yeah i i really like him i'm very excited to to mm-hmm. try him out and like if you if you don't want to play him with new ray like you can play him with uh with ayla and then 
get the profitable connections to play, you know, your, your three mm, drops on yeah, turn one, sure. which is insane. Also the art. So uh, it, it, interesting choice of art. I love it. And I think it's actually, I like the art better than the way that he actually looked in the movie. I don't know why mm-hmm. that for me and Darren Tan's the guy who drew it. And he is like the best thing they got going at fantasy uh, flight games. Yeah. The art is incredible. He does all the good stuff. He did the, like the Kylo and the raids for the, for the, uh, the initial oh, starter sets and the, the two player set or yeah, the original one. Uh, he, no, the original one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, it's really, really talented artist. So it looks good. Okay. So we like this card. You think this is one of the better ones they spoiled for sure. I, th- I yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's really cool. All right, so now we get to red. Now, red has a theme, and the theme is a guy that I think it seems to be like the not indie pick, but it's the it's what everybody wanted to play. And I think everyone is every set that it's come out since I've been playing this game, people have mm-hmm. said, "Well, I want to play, I want to play Grievous, and I want him to be good." So they all <laughs> they all with the new set comes out and they try Grievous again, and I yeah. think I think they're really. Uh, they listen to that. So we got three cards that all deal with with uh, Grievous. So here's one. This is an event. It's two cost. It's Furious Assault. Um, and this one's an uncommon. It's spot two red characters or General Grievous to roll all weapon dice on one of your characters into the pool. And the quote is, how does it feel to die? <laughs> Nasty. <That's> brutal. <laughs> so this is, uh, obviously this is a hero card. And uh, no. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> look at that. You can see like you can see his eyes in the art in this one too. Really it's cool. so good. Yep. They didn't it's really good. No it, interestingly, they, they didn't credit uh yeah. the artist on that one. So yeah. we'll probably have to wait until the card actually comes out. Uh, so spot two red characters or grievous. So uh roll all weapon die on one of your characters into the pool. That seems pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it seems awesome. It it, it is you know, like a, a bit of an investment of two resources. Um, also worth noting is that I don't think that we've seen a card like this before where you have to spot a particular character to, to do something. And I, I think that's incredible design. I, I just, I love that. Like yeah. it encourages you to kind of play, uh, you know, a, like build your deck in a specific way. And it, I, I, think, I just think it's really, really interesting. I forgot what podcast I was listening to. They said, but the, it might've been Chris that was talking about it that said, uh, I want to play whatever, whatever cards have the you know the character that's featured on the card like i will just include <laughs> that in the deck so like it was yeah like yeah Zeb I, or something. I, I i was saying that on on jedi trials so, yeah right <laughs> and it just <laughs> makes sense and i, I you know i no, wanted to go back works. <laughs> yes i wanted to go back and look at zeb and just like take all the cards that he's on and say like wow that's, mm-hmm. that's a pretty good deck that worked out pretty good somebody <laughs> just, to just smash it all together yeah so uh so this is uh this is, seems to be pretty strong i mean two but uh, when you see Grievous in a minute, that could be a lot of uh, weapon dice. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also, um, it, it doesn't, like, the, the character that you roll in their, their weapons, uh, that can be any character. So it could be, for instance, a blue character. If you want to roll out your Maul's lightsaber for a third time in a round. Right. Um, so that that is also worth worth uh, looking at. Yeah, I feel like this has a lot of, a lot of potential here to be abused. Yeah. To be abused. You know, I'm thinking about, like, I had a lot of experience playing OTK before the uh, before choosing, of course, a different deck last minute, and uh, and I just think about that the power of that rerolling that character, and it's really not in that deck. It's not Seven Sisters dice; it's the rest of the dice that go with it. And this would be this would be pretty sick. What, yeah, what it's, is, it's really cool. One one thing to note, I think, is that <laughs> uh, it only rerolls your weapon dice. Yeah, in so that would that would be like dice se- the Seeker wouldn't reroll there. Yeah, exactly, and it, and it's. Like most weapons are, you know, like at least two resources. <clears throat> right. So like mm. the investment required to get, you know, real value out of this card, I think makes it okay. Right. So, but we'll see. <laughs> so then it continues. And so this is jet. I don't remember. Has he, did he ride this bike in one of the movies? Yeah. In, uh, in, uh, Revenge of the Sith, I think he, okay. he, he wrote it. Hmm. I gotta, I gotta rewatch that. I think. But I, I honestly can't remember because I tried to block the those couple movies out of my memory See? sometimes. <laughs> See, that's it. You you have you have one of those spots too in your heart that's against yeah. Star Wars. Uh, this is a three cost uh, unique support vehicle. It's General Grievous's wheel bike. Uh, it's got a power action, which is spend one resource or spot General Grievous to ready the support. I love his quotes. I'll enjoy crushing you. General <laughs> All of his quotes are yeah. so brutal. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. I'll enjoy crushing you. And I hate you and your family. All of them together. <laughs> so this has a one, uh, let's see, um, one range, two melee, uh, 
uh, three modified melee. It's got one melee. Do you say melee or melee? How do you even say it? Or sticks? I say melee. Melee. But... Let's say yeah, melee just sounds terrible. I'm saying melee. I've, 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 I've never consulted the, the, the dictionary on that. Melee <laughs> is not the way to say that. All right. One range, two <laughs> melee, three melee is modified. And then it's, uh, it's one disrupt, one discard, and a blank. What say you, Rebel Spy? Uh, I think that it's uh, decent. I don't know if it's worth it, to be honest. Um, being able to to ready it is really cool, and being potentially getting you know like six damage out of it in a round is awesome. Right. Um, so I think in the right deck it could work. Uh, it, it it feels bad if you roll like disrupt in twice, uh, but there's so many ways to you know focus your dice right now in this yeah. game that uh, you know like that's not out of, out of the question. Um, I. Actually, like I think that one of the worst places for this is in a General Grievous deck, right. uh, at least the the new General Grievous, because in a minute we'll we'll see uh, that you're going to want to be spending your your money on weapons and not supports. Um, so it, it's a bit uh, you know odd in in that sense, but uh, maybe it finds a you know a home. Yeah, it's a so it's a legendary. Uh... So I can expect to get a lot of these if it's not good. Uh, it's not terrible. I don't, you know, this doesn't strike me as being terrible right off the bat. No, no, no. I, I think it's like perfectly fine. But like if I'm yeah, playing this in, again, sealed or, or draft, you know what I mean? Like, oh, dra- I, yeah. Dra- draft. This is obvious. I'd, I'd take this in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, so it's not, it's not going to be uh, no value, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Because then when you look at this one, uh, oh. yeah, there's just so much I like about this card and I know it's expensive, but I just, I've got to figure this out. I've got to play this. He's a, it's grievous. He's a fearsome cyborg, uh, mm. 13 health. This is 15 for single die 24 elite. Uh, it's got one melee, two melee, three melee, two disrupt and a resource and a blank, uh, character leader. And then all the magic ignore all play restrictions on weapons played in this character. Ignore all play restrictions on Perfect. weapons played in this character. He can have... Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's everything mean can go on him, right? Yeah. All play restrictions. All of them. He can have one additional upgrade. And his power action is if four of this character's weapon di- dice are in your pool, deal four damage to a character. It's a legendary card number 21. This is crazy. Yeah. It's it's so cool. As a, as a theme guy... Like this, this ticks all the boxes, you know, like no ignore doubt. all play restrictions and weapons for this character that clearly, you know, is representing the fact that he, you know, wields lightsabers. So like all the blue character, only lightsabers, like he, he doesn't care. He's general Grievous. Yeah. I'll take, um, whatever you need. And then he can have an additional upgrade because he has four arms, right? Which is so cool. Yeah. That's but, smart. uh, it, it has, has now occurred to me that, uh, that, that just a, like, so, somehow they they increase the you know like the the limit to four so that you can have four upgrades, but everybody else can still have three upgrades for some random reason. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> exactly. So thematically, works <laughs> but for I, him. I, I I I love it for for Grievous. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so now it means like how the heck do you play this guy? So I'm looking around. Uh, let's let's bring up my handy dandy list here. So I've got uh, <laughs> one die original Kylo. Mm-hmm. There you go. That sounds exciting. Uh, it's just a little too expensive. So you can't do Bala there. You can do a Tuscan Raider. Yeah. See, Sienna Reed doesn't work. Magna Guard is nine. Uh, Sir that would the be thematic Dark... for sure. Yeah. Def- wow. The, the, the Magna Guards are kind of Grievous's, uh, like bodyguards. Were they in, uh, in, in the original prequel? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that they were, uh, in Revenge of the Sith at least. God, I gotta rewatch that. That's terrible. I didn't even know that. You 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 don't have to rewatch. Okay, it. I fine. won't. You told me. Yeah, I'll, I'll trust your judgment. Uh, so we got. So we can run a Grievous and uh, Elite Bazine. Nah. Okay, we don't want that. Gamorian Guard. Gamorian Guard. That's Gamorian true. Guard is definitely interesting. Twenty four health to deal with, right? Mm-hmm. Twenty three. Sorry, twenty three health to deal with. No, it's yeah, eleven. Yeah. Eleven health. Twenty four. Twenty twenty four health to deal with, and the the pig has Guardian, which is. Obviously, yeah, um, look amazing. If you're trying to keep Grievous alive, yep, that might work there. Okay, we got t- uh, one die Talzin, which could all, could also work really well for sure. Yeah, one die Talzin. You know, I think about uh, maybe they're really trying to encourage that. Yeah, the the three die start absolutely. I mean, man, it's it's definitely uh, possible. It slows the game down a little bit. You got uh, then mm-hmm. a bunch of scrubs here. You got uh, <laughs> let's see, Bib. Yeah, no, I don't think so. 
uh, is that right? It's 10? One die? No, no. no that, that's that, wrong, that's right? before the yeah, errata. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They didn't change that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Death Trooper? No. Um, nah. Royal Guard, maybe. Yeah. He's, he's got Guardian. I, I think I would play the Pig over the Royal Guard, though, like every time. Yeah, you want the yellow stuff, right? Unless you really, really want a blue for some reason. One die on card. Maybe you do for lightsabers. No, because they, they uh, nerfed they that up, too, didn't they? they? The points on on card yeah. too. Yeah. What is that? Is that eleven four? You got one die phasma. Well, there you go. But then you're you're stuck with only uh, red. <sighs> yeah, I don't know if I like that either. I don't know. I think yeah. off the top of my head, just by looking at this, I think this might be it right there. Yeah, I think the the Gamorian guard is definitely w- would be like my my first first pick, my my go to, unless I could find something better. If you ran him elite. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And you, you, you certainly don't have to. You could run him at fifteen and then play him with like, let's say, Seven Sister, yeah, right. uh, who's in every single villain deck right now. Yeah, right. Or um, like Hondo, even. So yeah, that's true too. Interesting. Or you got you know here it could again that one die could work, and then you have one point to deal with. What's that plot that you discard a card from the top of your deck? Oh, that, that's worthless. That's bad. I don't know. Yeah, why, <laughs> why do they even make that? I don't even understand. That. I don't either. So yeah, so this is crazy, and I I, yeah. I I would love to see what people think about that. Like I'm sure people. Yeah, are I like my, my my first instinct is to play him in a deck where you can play a bunch of one cost weapons. Um, so like right off the right, bat, you right. get like the DH17 and the hunting rifle. Um, they're all one cost. Yep. So like you know it, the 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 easier you can you can hit that, like the more easily you can use the power action, which is just ridiculous right on top of his die like uh, like general grievous alone like just on his character so with his dice as long as you have you know four four weapons on him which is difficult and your opponent has to not remove those um before you use the power action but he can have a three from one of his dice a three from another one of his dice and then four damage from the power action so (laughs) sorry 10 damage off of just just his character stuff like that's pretty, uh, that that's was a pretty, high ceiling. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is really good. Yeah, I like that idea. You know, get weapons on as fast as possible, right? Mm-hmm. As quickly as possible. And I think people doing that. And then again, something like a, a God Talzin's so good. I really feel like something's going to happen there around the balance of yeah. the force. I do. Yeah, I, 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 I could potentially see it. It's just that's she all she. That's really, all I saw. Really good. That's all that was there. So like they talk about. I know that's a, it, that people talk about the. It is a healthy whatever healthy meta means. I mean, the, the fact that every <laughs> single, every single week it's, uh, it's a variety of decks that are, that are winning. I guess that's how you determine that if it's a healthy meta, mm-hmm. but you know, no doubt about it. There's, there's always options. However, in, in Rochester anyway, like it was towels and all day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there, there's always going to be cards that sort of rise at the top. Um, towels and has definitely been one of those, those cards. That, I mean, like, for a card with that point cost, like but before that, it was kind of like I, I think uh, Balatik was kind of that character. Yeah, definitely. Where like every you know villain deck that played a cheap character was playing Balatik. Um, so I think yeah, it's just kind of shifted over to to Talzin being sort of the the go to cheap villain character. Yeah, and, and, and I mocked for, that for card. good reason. I mocked that card. You know, I'm like, hey, who's going to want to do? It's like it, it's a. Uh having to do math, you know, blue algebra, you have to turn, you're just calculating stuff all the time, but you know, making decks that are competitive, that are all, all odd. Ha- like it's happening. Like it, it, yeah, it's guaranteed yeah. until it's, you roll her out and immediately fix a die. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not as hard to do as, pe- as people kind of initially uh, thought it might be. So, no. um, and it t- turns out rolling out a guaranteed focus that you get to immediate re- immediately resolve is uh, quite good. Yeah, this just in. It's, that's really good. <laughs> also, I still don't know who she is. Darth Maul's mom, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Dar- Darth Maul, Ventress, Savage, all, all these characters all that, that you, 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 you don't know that no. you should know because they're, they're awesome and interesting. So I will say I did, I did like two nights ago, I Googled, uh, how can I watch Rebels? So on the XD, what is it? Disney XD or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. So it, I was able to type in my uh, name and password or whatever for my cable that I have. And, mm-hmm. and it, you can watch it right there. It, from I think I was watching the very first episode. And it wasn't nice. terrible. It wasn't terrible. You know hey, that's awesome. I, everything was right about it. Uh, by the way, this is the part where Chip talks about Rebels. 
uh, <laughs> everything was right about it except like the sound was good like it felt like it was like move like movie-esque it was really all well done except the, the art it's like really computery and i don't know if that changes over time like over the course of the seasons it's like really it's, computery looking yeah it, it, it's kind of like just their art style in yeah. a way um yeah. i like when I first started watching Clone Wars, like that, uh, yes, definitely yes. kind of like turned me off a little bit to it. But um, once I got used to it, it like now it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say that in general, like as the show goes on, um, just pretty much everything about it improves. Yeah. So uh, like the the story gets better, the writing gets better, the characters get better, like the the art gets better, the music gets better. Okay. Um, so I I mean I definitely. I, I will say, like, right now, you should definitely continue to watch it. And um, I, I legitimately think that you'll, that you'll enjoy it. It was not terrible, is what I'm saying. So, like, Sabine, Sabine Wren was there. They, you don't know who anybody is yet. It was, K- right? Kanan and uh, it's yeah, all about Kanan, Ezra. Yeah, Sabine, Zeb, Ezra, Hera, yeah, Zeb Chopper. Yeah, in there, too. Yeah. You got, like, the, the main ghost crew. That's it, the ghost crew. There you go. I'm going to know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I know what the ghost is now, but. I, I'm, I'm going to be the, the expert at some point. And you know, the other thing I was thinking about, Mike, is that um, like I have after, so the regional happened and it was a really great experience and it was a lot of fun. And then I talked a lot about, uh, about my experience with uh, Jack from the golden dice podcast, which by the way, shout out to those guys, fantastic stuff. And after meeting him uh, in person, there's somebody else who really cares about the game. So you should definitely support the stuff that he's doing. Um, but, uh, but just after that experience there, um, all I'm thinking about now are pairings and like you play, you play that back in your head and like, man, how, how can you bring something unique to the table? Because I feel like, um, I feel like there's, there's, there's just room to explore. You know, the game has a lot of players, but not too many that, that I find it hard to believe there's not pairings that people haven't thought about yet, or just those combinations. Like the, I think there's still that puzzle is still to be solved is what I'm saying. Mm hmm. And I just, I, I can't get out of my head. Like I think about, I'm in the shower. I think about driving to work. <laughs> I'm like, I have a, you know, one of those apps that we talked about where the, the, the team builder. And so you just like think about, well, what, what can I pair this person with? And what are the, you know, so I think about this with grief. It's like, what's the best way to put these characters together? And then three die is not the way to go because you need to have more die in the pool, you know, to start the game. And, and just being able to really concoct like that, that laboratory of, of cards. I don't know if you go through that, but uh, I feel like uh, that's where I'm at now. Yeah, I, I definitely do that. I have, I I can't even tell you how many decks I have built in uh, the database. <laughs> yeah. Like every you know every couple of days, I think of a new idea, and I just like have to try try and figure it out. Um, so man, I'm I'm definitely in the same boat. Yeah, it's just it's uh it's exciting. You want to bring something fresh, just bring something fresh to the party, and sometimes that that uh the idea of just surprise because if if. I think part of it is knowing, you know, if you, if you really start to, to uh, look at what your opponent's doing and knowing what's already what's in their hand, if you have enough experience playing their decks um, or just, you know, that's why testing is so important. Like if you get a chance to just know what they're looking for and how they're playing it and you kind of watch as they're, as they're going along, it just helps you, you know, get that advantage. Definitely. And then if you, if you go in and you, you play a deck that, that people aren't expecting and people don't know how to play against, uh, that, that, that's a huge advantage. Yep. Yep. It's just a matter of what's, what's good and what's bad. So the original topic, Mike, we still have to do it, which is coming up with that. I, I know there's gotta be a way so that I want to be able to plug these cards into like some sort of a formula that at least gives you a, like a bare bones rough sort of, you know, what, like the playability of a card. And I mm-hmm. guess then, you know, thinking about like, for what would it be competitive or non-competitive, but like this card right here, like, <laughs> Luke say I can never look at this card again the same way. <laughs> card number sixty nine, Luke <laughs> Luke Skywalker. You know they did. There's no way. You we saw it like right. Maybe it helped because this card was like right there. But <laughs> yeah, Luke's package. But then Luke Skywalker's lightning rod sixty nine. Somebody had to know that going yeah. in. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but like this card. I don't know how you'd have, see that it's that it's that the, the, the text on the card changes it so much. Like there's whatever scale or, or rubric right. It, right. You know, how do you, yeah, it's, it's really hard to account for that. Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, like you've, you've probably noticed like what, you know, when, when sets mm-hmm. get spoiled and stuff like that, like the cards that people think are going to be good are uh, many times like not actually good when, yeah. you know, it comes to actually playing the card and vice versa. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just hard to evaluate, right? Because there's so many variables, especially on dice cards where right. like, you can't guarantee that you're going to get a specific side every time you roll it out. So you got to like do this weird math where you like average out like the probability of rolling, you know, a damage. So let like Luke Scour's light, lightning rod, for instance, you have a 50% chance of rolling damage and then you have a 60% chance of that damage being two right. and a 30% chance of that damage being one. So it's like, how do you actually calculate that into like a sort of damage per round expectant, like, 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 right. you know, like expected value. Um, and I'm sure there's a way to do that. I'm just so bad at math that I have no idea what it is. Right. And then, and then it all goes to, to, to crap because you're rolling a die. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. At the end of the day. And there's two, and there's two <laughs> levels of math to that. The first is if you even get it right. If you even get the mm-hmm. card, cause you might not even see the card. you know, there's times where like, uh, you know, I'm not seeing the cards that I want to see uh, at all. So you may not even see it as you go through. Yeah. And I wonder with him. And I, I think back to the, you know, the, the whatever all the different flavors of luke you know cards like this does it do anything to the older versions of you know luke do they make him any more playable uh this card in particular maybe not maybe like the the sort of farm boy luke the the 10 11 or no 10 uh 14 or 11 14 or whatever he is um but I think that he's just a lot more playable than the uh, you know sixteen twenty or fifteen twenty Luke or whatever he is, right, right. Um, just because like that version of Luke is so uh, expensive. just so kind expensive. of overcosted. Yeah, so expensive there. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, and then you got the grumpy uh, grumpy Luke right there, grumpy Jedi, if you will. Yeah, gr- 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 grumpy Jedi Luke is definitely my favorite version of Luke. So out of all these cards right now, the top, give me your top three that you feel like, uh, not, they don't even have to be the best, but the ones that you're most excited to play with. Uh, the plot for yeah, sure. Built yeah. to last. Uh, I, I just think it opens up so many. Let me so zoom out. Doors. I'm going to zoom out on this card a little bit. That's better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very, okay. in, very intimidating. <laughs> there you go. That's much better. All right. Built yeah, to last. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I think it just, uh, it, there's so much value to be thing that uh i i just think that it can't be ignored um it's just great so all right so i, I would say i would say built to last uh luke and grievous yep i would agree there that's pretty awesome what do you got coming up uh destiny wise what have you been uh, any any been playing at all or what's been going on um i man i i haven't been able to to get to the shop in a um I, I started uh, playing music again, like regularly. So that's been nice. taking up a lot of my time. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to get to the shop sometime this week to play. Um, and yeah, just uh, trying every once in a while to play on Tabletop Simulator, even though that's not really my favorite way to play. At least I get some games in. So yeah, that's been. I, I feel like I, I need to get more games in person. And, and uh, playing in the regional was an amazing experience here, and it was not very i mean it was three and four but i i thought about it and i'm not sure your experience mike but like i got home and uh, i could not shut it down for like a day like i kept yeah. thinking it and i just wanted to go back and you're just trying to spend time with your family and i'm like god i could i was so close and <laughs> it's there's like three or four plays and then you're five and two i mean it really yeah 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 you're you're like you think back and you're like oh yeah i could have done this different and then yeah you really want to like you know play more so that like you can make the right decisions the next time yeah uh, but yeah, it's yeah. The the one thing I will say is that um like my motivation to to play and to like test and to do all that stuff definitely goes down when I don't have uh sort of like a big event to prepare for. Um yeah. so I uh wish that wasn't the case, but uh some sometimes it, it is. So Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and then a week after you go ahead and get your uh your Tarkin spot gloss, which is I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure proudly on your shelf. Uh, yeah, well, it's, jar jar it's in my out. binder right now. It should be a jar jar, and uh, yeah, it hopefully will be a jar jar at some point. Seeing that I've never held one, how cool is this box loss? <laughs> it's it, it's cool. I mean, it feels very substantial. It's like you know, it's it's a piece of plastic, and it just looks sweet. Does it, it bend at nice. all? Is it kind of bendy? 
Uh, yeah, it's it's got some some bend to it. Okay. It's like a credit card. Like I I would yeah. say that it's like kind of that like thickness and that material. Does it fit in a sleeve? It does fit in a sleeve. It depends on the sleeve though. Like the Dragon Shields, um, it fits snugly. Uh, the sort of Fantasy Flight sleeves with like the characters on the back, it fits a bit better because yeah. those are kind of big. So quick aside. So you had talked about um about the the just the way you prepare and then the, the card sleeves you use and all that stuff. You said dragon shields all day, right? So mm-hmm. I, I said, you know what? I want to be, I want to take Mike's advice. So I order two days before the, the, the regional, I order dragon shields. And then I'm reading that some dragon shields are translucent, which why would you ever make a card sleeve that's translucent? <laughs> that's translucent. Right? Yeah, the, I whole, don't know. the whole point is for you to cover up the card. But I guess the yeah. only two colors uh, that, and I, I, people have been asked to not play in a, in like magic tournaments because you can see through mm-hmm. the back. So it's, it's black and it's purple. I guess those I are the translucent ones. Those are the ones that are opaque, fully opaque. Oh, okay. Are, fully. Opaque. They're legal yeah, yeah. no matter what. Right. So I ordered Got purple it. off Amazon and I, it's coming, you know, the day before uh, the event. So it's Friday, get the mail. There it is. There are two purples. They're two purples. Oh, did, did you get like the, like a lighter version of them? Yes, the wrong purple. Who knew there were two <laughs> purples? So screw dragon shields. So then I have to go <laughs> with my other stuff. You know, I did have black dragon shields, but what the heck? Who? Why would you ever do that? I I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I I I haven't actually ever problem. Uh, See, I think although th- I do tend to go with the darker <laughs> colored sleeves. So I think destiny. Uh, so here's the other thing. I was really nervous about. Just the community, the way it would be, like how, how aggressive would the tournament be, and mm-hmm. every, everybody was beyond great. Even the like the you could tell the the really competitive players were even nicer uh, in in person and people who I've met and met online. So that was cool. And uh, uh, Ray from Thundershot Games, just a quick shout out to him. He had matte. They were the matte finish dragon sleeves, but they were totally like they were clear. And, oh wow! Yeah, and, and no one cares. No one cared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I think I mean, maybe, maybe at World, I don't know, but nobody cared. Yeah, that that that's like one of my favorite things about the Destiny community is just like how awesome everybody is. Yeah. Uh, what like one of the reasons why I left, you know, like however many years ago it was, was because I really did not like the community for that game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm very very happy, and uh, I feel lucky that the community for this game is so awesome. Yeah, there was somebody uh, uh, having a temper tantrum behind us as we were playing. Like, this is my last last game of the day. And it was some Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know. Weird <laughs> names of cards and things. I mean, you think I don't know Rebels. I have, it was like another language they were speaking. They were screaming <laughs> yeah. and fighting and all that kind of stuff. But then one other thing, real quick. In the, <laughs> so Millennium Games, again, shout out to those people. They, they know how to put on a tournament. It was fantastic. And the prize support was great. But in the back, they do a lot of tabletop gaming. So mm-hmm. like that, that war gaming stuff, Warhammer, whatever it is. But they had all of these like like I don't know cityscapes set up with trees and looks like model railroads and all this stuff. And uh, and so I just I keep reading about Star Wars Legion, and it looks mm-hmm. it just mm-hmm. it's just, I just can't I can't get bit by that bug. But yeah, I, me, me neither. The whole uh, putting stuff together and painting God. them thing is just not not my speed. So but yeah, it is a little bit relaxing. You know, it looks it, like, yeah, yeah. I, so w- w- when I was a kid, um, I, I was introduced to, to Warhammer for like, uh, by, by a friend. Oh, and so I, I took my mom to the, the, or my mom took me to the like uh, game shop to, yeah. to pick some up. Uh, <laughs> nice mom. That's and a so great, that's I, a great I, mom right there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I have, so I have painted Warhammer miniatures when I was in like, you know, seventh grade, but I have not ever once played that game or pretty much any other miniatures game yeah yeah like <laughs> it's the rules it's, the, it's like it's like rules for make-believe almost so it's a little yeah. bit like D almost but i can get into D. I, I don't know yeah that that's the part i have a little bit of trouble with yeah yeah and i like i like the way that the fantasy that like one of the things that i think just like really really yeah. like took me out of it and made me not really want to play was the fact that you have to play with like a ruler like that that right, just right, seems right. so odd to me and so just like not <laughs> not what i want to be doing with my time yeah um but yeah i mean it like legion is star wars and like you know i'm always down to try anything star wars at least once yeah um so like if someone else had a set and they wanted to like you know play a game like i would be totally down to learn how to play and then play with them but uh i, I don't 
I don't think I would survive uh, in in my relationship anymore if I if I started taking up another game like star wars game hobby <laughs> yeah that'd be over and you need like three feet by six feet and you know i'm claustrophobic playing destiny so let alone having <laughs> i gotta have six feet of room to play this game That's yeah right crazy. here's a quick fun fact it is in tabletop simulator oh that that's good to know. Yeah, right, right. Good. Good <laughs> file that under. Never going to do it. And when you need yep. your therapy, you can play your guitar or whatever. Is <laughs> yeah. You play, but, um, yeah. So anyway, it was a great time. And uh, props to the last guy I played. I don't know if you heard the story, but I played five. five I, I was ready to play five die, uh, five Jawa. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and so I backed out of that. But uh, I did play one person who did bring five Jawa, so I give him all the credit of the That's world. That's epic. But he was uh-huh. he was nuts. The guy was actually nuts, and I uh, like to play it alone. But when he actually when he played sound the alarm and then made the alarm sound uh, at the top <laughs> the top of his lungs. Oh and my I, god! I, That's I kid amazing. you, I kid you not, Mike. He stood <laughs> on the chair and ooh, like at the top of his lungs, and then <laughs> and then he killed Boba Fett, which. You know, tells you about how my day was going. Yes, and by the way, it was oh, it was Bartholomew that did it because he named all five of the Jawas. So <laughs> Bartholomew, which was the fifth one, go Bartholomew. Yes, killed Boba Fett. He screamed Utini as loud as I think I've ever heard it. Uh, and then that, I and that's then I won. Amazing. Yeah, so I give him, <laughs> I give him a lot of credit. And then my day, I don't know if you heard how my day began, but my day began where I'm all prepared as best as I could be, and I, you know, I've got a. I mean, I, I read about this stuff 24 seven. So I've got to, at least I have a handle on what I expect to see. And then the first deck I see is a count Dooku deck. So <laughs> that in a nutshell tells you how well my day went. But what, what was the pairing? I don't, you know what? It's a blur. You don't remember. I, I have, no, yeah. I don't remember <clears throat> like Jack was, re, he, he could tell you in order the turns that happened from the time he showed up in the parking lot. And then uh, Zach, who, uh, my best friend uh, from uh, Webster, he played with me and I got, I hooked him into the game, which is great. He had a little moleskin notebook. So he's sitting there like a professor in college, right? Mm-hmm. Down. Well, in the uh, game one, I believe that if I would have countered this maneuver, whatever, taking his notes, I, <laughs> I don't know. I was so nervous that first time out. I, I, I didn't hey, I'm, I'm like in exactly the same boat as you where like after, after a tournament, for whatever reason, it's just like wiped from my memory. Yeah, it's yeah. as if I had never played the tournament in the first place. Yep. Uh, so yeah, like uh, looking back at, at you know like turns and and stuff like can't do it. Very very few things actually remain in my, in my memory. So I think I've, that's why I've got to stick to a deck and just keep just keep playing it to the point where I feel really comfortable because you, you know that that's mm-hmm. just going to happen. And uh, and I really wanted to meet people too. So it was interesting uh, to get a chance to meet people and. I Definitely just talk about the talk about the game, but it, the best part about it, and we said this before we went on, is just you, sometimes you feel like, and if you're if you're listening to this podcast and all the other great content that's out there, you love the game, and you know we have a good, I think, it's a really healthy community. But outside of our little circle here, through our podcast and through the you know the network of, of content creators, sometimes it feels like you're the only person that knows anything about this game. So it's uh, it's cool to be in a room with seventy people who are really passionate about it, at least enough to show up to you know, to play it all day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And it's great to just be able to, you know, chat with people and just hang out with people that love the same thing you do. Yep. Yep. It's awesome. But well, this is a very, it's an awesome surprise. And so we, we were really, you know, I was really struggling to think about uh, how to come up with some cool stuff to talk about. And then this happened. So Mike, uh, as always, you are uh, amazing. And uh, thanks for, for at the, the drop of a hat coming on, uh, even though you're alone with your cat and your guitar. (laughs) <laughs> uh, to talk about the uh, the ways of the force yeah man thanks so much for having me this is always always a fun time and i whenever whenever you want me back on your show i'm, I'm there man you're the you're the man you're the king maybe so now we got to figure out some decks i don't know i've got a w- world is coming up right when is that when does that happen worlds is in may it's in may yeah so march uh so this set will not be out in time for worlds so did they say did that's the last thing i guess we can end on what what did did they give a date yeah, they uh, they said quarter three, and then they said quarter two, and then they said quarter three. Did they really? So, yeah, it's well. So like, yeah. Okay. So at the bottom it says third quarter. Um, like well, in that the middle totally of the is day, different. That's they to- changed, yeah. They, it, they definitely changed that. Yeah, yeah, like in the middle of the day, it's it, well, okay. They they released it and it's the third quarter, and then in the middle of the day it said second quarter, and then now it's back to. Third. So how is that uh, even possible? Who knows? What? <laughs> my my guess is that it'll be out in July. 
ba- based on sort of what has happened in the past. Um, so, uh, like, Awakenings came out in December, I want to say. Okay. And the next set came out in June. So, like, Spirit uh, Legacies came out in February. This will have a lot just by that token. Uh, my, my hunch is that it'll come out closer to July. So. Huh. Okay. So, so, so they can fit, you know, three sets with, within the year. Do you think, yeah, but okay, wait a minute. So it wasn't really February. You know, that is very American centric. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, right. No, was, when was it, was it in Europe? Was it in December? Date, uh, I, I don't know. I, I thought the official release date just. True. That could be. So was very, it the, uh, the preview? Wrong wave. about that. <laughs> let's see, Legacies. Uh, let's see. Star, Destiny, uh, Legacies. Yeah, like I, I know the the preview wave definitely was out in Europe before it was out here. Um, that Des- was like the middle of January. December, I think. no, December fifteenth, the North December American fifteenth. Yeah, wow. so so they've been dealing with the set for Jeez. a while. Our friends across the way there, see three man meta, and your destiny podcast. They're like, dude, this has been a year going in. Yeah, they're they're gonna have a long time to wait. <laughs> Unless, because, unless I wonder if I can change this to like the UK version of the site and see if that says oh, like yeah. it says like next week it's coming out. See if they change it different. Yeah, no, I I, I think that they'll yeah it's like gonna... I, I I think that they try to release it around the same time for each uh, you know lo- location. Usually it it arrives like you know out of the country after it arrives here, but I don't know, sometimes that doesn't sometimes that doesn't hold true. Like uh, we saw with Legacies. Yeah, for sure. What's this other stuff they released? Is this the quarter kits? Yeah. Which the hold up blasters look really nice. It's just uh, a bit late because uh, hold up blasters are only going to be legal for another year. And, right. Uh, they don't really see that much play anymore. What's this? Cl- what is cl- Clash of Fates tournament? Is that just what they're calling it? I yeah, I think that that's just what they're calling the just like weekly or whatever tournaments, like what, whatever like the kit tournament is. Okay. Um, Interesting. So. I do like that. I like that full. Yeah, the art looks really sweet. That's really nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, all right. Good. Man, now I got to get these cards. I wonder when they're going to be in tabletop. I was trying to do that actually before, like seeing how I could build. If there's, So I might not play a lot of tabletop, but I could at least figure out how to deal with like bringing cards in. I know there's a way to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I can help you out with that. Oh, re- oh, okay. Have you done it? So like making a little, like bringing these, making them into cards? Like the, the 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 new ones? Yes. Um. Yeah. Like I I I could probably figure out how to do that pretty quick. There we go. Uh, it's it's probably more more trouble than it's worth. Yeah. Uh, at the end until of the day. like the mod just gets updated, but uh, yeah, it's I think it's just a matter of like taking the image and then attaching it to like a a card, um, oh. you know, like like a card file. So there you go. See, you hear yeah. here first. That would be good. We're, we're, the, you got to be one of the, the f- die. On the other hand, I don't know how to do. <laughs> they t- yeah, let's. I want to look into that. All right, we'll see if we can do that. But everybody, uh, we're glad that you are here and that you uh, you enjoy this little uh, Dyson card game. It's so much fun, and it's really exciting to be uh, talking about worlds coming up soon too. And so, hopefully, within this, uh, as we like, blow past our regional season, people start really. It, it's going to get quiet for a while i think as people are going to talk a little bit less about what they're going to play and then uh and then it'll be a whole bunch of news all at the end so Mm -hmm. we'll have to uh we'll have to watch it on the internet uh mike yeah yeah hope i'm still crossing my fingers that i can uh snag a ticket uh at the end of the month but yeah we 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 shall see would you uh, do you have full permission to go uh yeah yeah gee geez that's awesome (laughs) i'm gonna live vicariously through you then if i get it can i give it to you uh, I don't know. I think you have to sign up like under your own name, so probably mm-hmm. not. All right, all right. Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll be pulling for you, Mike. Thanks, Either man. way. But anyway, Mike, thank you, and everybody else, uh, thank you for uh, for joining us for this uh, very uh, impromptu episode talking about Way of the Force. And as always, uh, I hope that all of your rerolls are special ones. We'll see you next week. Awesome, perfect timing as my wife flushed the toilet, so I can hear that too right, <laughs> right over my head. <laughs> What are you still doing here? What do you think this is, a Marvel movie where you get some extra content at the end? All right, well, I'll give you some. This is for our patrons. Thank you so much, patrons, for making the show possible. Uh, without you, really, we couldn't be doing it, and uh, your support really means a lot. Every dollar counts, and for all of you who contributed to the show, thank you, and I'm excited for you to start getting some cool stuff 
coming your way uh, with our, our awesome alt archives that finally came in. And we're going to get everybody all caught up with that. So thanks for your patience. And I want to specifically mention you by name right now. We've got our, our uh, high rollers. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing it, really making the show possible. It's Chad Bosquez, who is a new re-roller. Uh, we've got Lester Ortiz, Miranda, the Grumpy Jedi, and Anthony Carrizales. Anthony, you were there from day one. I, thank you so much for, for your support. And then we've got uh, our next tier. Uh, that's Thundershot Games and Ray. It's great to meet you uh, at a regional. I can't wait to start doing some content with you. We've got Daniel, Forrest and Katrina, Joseph Ritchie, Joshua Levy, Justin Allen, CDEP, our first patron. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy Springer, uh, Uriah, Brian Wakefield, Sam, Colin, Danny, James Dorf, Andrew Cravens, and Mike Rudin. Of course, the Rebel Spy. You heard him on this very show. The guy gives of his time and his money, and thank you so much. Uh, we have Jonathan Bishop, Freak Show 808, Aaron Harding, Jeremy Wade, Jan Anarella, uh, David Hildebrand, and Jason Belts. Jason, thank you. It was great to see you, too. Uh, at the regional, Hunter Lee, Jackalman Games, Alan Preston. Alan, thank you uh, for your contributions. We appreciate that. Nathan Wilcock, Elzig, Monks Gaming Battlefield. Great stuff on the internet, giving to us, too. Uh, One with the Forest, Michael Eccleson, uh, Chris Terwilliger, that's Top Deck TCG. And if you need some Star Wars singles, by the way, you know about Top Deck TCG, or you should. You should head over to that website. And Lee Price, all of you, thank you from uh, really from the bottom of my heart for helping support the show. It means a lot, and uh, for all you do, thank you. 